at 6 p.m. It is time to check in on the race for the White House. Graham Morris and Bruce Hawker join us as they do each Monday afternoon. And we're going to get on to local politics as well. But just a, a quick check on what's been happening in the U.S. Um, Bruce, Donald Trump, he, he copped a fair bit of criticism uh, last week for suggesting Japan and South Korea should be nuclear armed. He's backing in those comments. He's again uh, today suggesting that this is the, the way to go. The U.S. should step back from, uh, you know, the, the heavy investment it's, it's got in that part of the world and let Japan and South Korea do more of the heavy lifting. The consequences, though, the consequence. I mean, Obama's called him out on this, Malcolm Turnbull, many other world leaders as well. Uh, of this sort of, uh, you know, nuclear arms race are, um, are frightening. Yeah. Remember um, uh, Barry Goldwater back in 1964? You probably don't, but he, uh, he had a policy to, to, to nuke Hanoi. And, uh, and his campaign slogan was, in your heart, you know he's right. And then the uh, Democrats' response was, in your guts, you know he's nuts. And, uh, ah, and, and that's where Anthony Albanese gets it from. I dare say so. <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> that's exactly uh, where I think people will start to come from on this. I mean, Goldwater lost terribly as a result of the, you know, the fear that was generated out of that campaign. Uh, you know, Americans tread very carefully, I think, around the issue of uh, international security and their leadership role there. It looks like they're stepping back too much from it or they're trying to yeah. uh, suggest that others should go nuclear armed who aren't currently nuclear armed like the uh, Japanese. Then you're getting into a really bizarre area and it could just be a bridge too far. Yeah, and, and, and Graham, I note Donald Trump has been trying to clear the air, perhaps uh, mend some fences with uh, the Republican, um, you know, high guard. But as Bruce mentioned, national security for the Republicans, particularly, is such a strong suit. These sort of comments aren't going to help settle the nerves of worried Republican establishment figures. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and we raised this on this program last week. You know, look, he had a shocker of a week, Donald Trump. Um, and, and, you know, Wednesday our time, there's the, uh, yeah, and, and, and another sort of um, test for him. This is Wisconsin and, primarily, in Wisconsin. yeah. And it's just interesting, come, some, come the convention in Cleveland, he's got to get 1,300 and something votes, and by the look of it, he just might pull, pull up short. And then you've got sort of a brokered convention where everyone is wheeling and dealing because nobody's got 50% plus one. And I'm beginning to think that, that the Republican Party, if he doesn't win, the Republican Party really could fracture quite badly because these Trump supporters, if he doesn't get up, they're not just going to go away. And I, I suspect they're going to play merry hell. And, and all, this, all, all that will do is make sure that Madam Clinton becomes president and God help us all. Mm. Um, well, Bruce, just quickly on that, on that uh, Democrat side, let's just uh, mention that uh, for a moment. Um, uh, Bernie Sanders, he's facing a lot of questions about his tax return, I see, and not lodging that. I can't imagine there'll be uh, as much interest in what is produced there as it will be in Donald Trump's tax return. But, uh, look, th th they're also having debates about debates. That, that seems to happen uh, in any election campaign. Boy, they seem to have had a lot of debates on both sides. Uh, the, the battle for New York, though, um, is going to be interesting. Hillary Clinton's uh, home state, she, of course, represented as a senator. How's that going to go? Well, I suspect that uh, sh she will prevail in New York because uh, there is significant ethnic diversity there. there it's, uh, parts of New York, are, particularly the city, are quite affluent. Those things are all going to work well for uh, Hillary. I think he actually comes from New York originally, but, uh, you know, it's very much uh, Hillary's part of the world. So uh, I would expect that, uh, that she would do well in that, uh, in, in that state. Um, she also, uh, that, that'll, that one I think is on the 18th or 19th of April. They're going to hold the De Democratic and Republican primaries on the same day in New York. That'll be a big one. And, uh, it, you know, it, as we said last week, it's still theoretically or mathematically possible for Sanders to win, but it would be very, very difficult. It looks to me more and more like she will take it out. Um, and, of course, and on the Republican side with... Uh, Trump, if he were to be somehow denied the nomination, there would be nothing to stop him from running as a third party candidate and uh, completely blowing it for the Republicans. So he's got them over a barrel, I think. Let's move to local politics. Um, I'm not sure if we've, we've got to hear play it once more time, but Kevin Andrews 
Trying to clean up uh, what's been a fairly messy issue for, for him in particular today after his quote in the local newspaper, the Manningham leader, Graham, uh, that if circumstances arose, he would be prepared to contest the leadership of the Liberal Party. He of course, did back in 2009. He says, though, now that the comment, the quote, has been taken out of context. Have a look. That story was taken out of context. It was talking about the past. Uh, the Prime Minister is the Prime Minister and he will lead us to the next election, and that's quite clear. But do you rule out ever, ever doing what you did in the past? I look, uh, at the present time, uh, Mr Turnbull is the Prime Minister, he's the leader of the coalition. He will take us to the next election, as I said. The story has been taken right out of context. At the present time, Malcolm Turnbull is uh, the Prime Minister and leader of the coalition. Uh, Graham, does that, does that clean it up much? <laughs> when, when I first saw it, it, it sort of... Look, Kevin's a good bloke. He's a very good minister, and I've known him for a long time. See a butt coming here. When, when I first saw that story uh, this morning, I, I thought uh, that, that Kevin was saying that under certain circumstances he might have a go. And I was thinking, well, under certain circumstances, I might be called on to be captain of the Australian women's netball team too, but I can't <laughs> think of what those circumstances would be. Um, and then I thought he was almost looking for a sign. And, and in his electorate, uh, Templestowe, there's probably a burning bush or two somewhere out at Warren Dyke, a few salt <laughs> pillars. Um, look, he, he, did, he did clean it up, but you, you could almost see what happened. And that was some local journal was said, look, do you think you should be running again given that, you know, your best of your career is behind you? And he would have said tongue-in-cheek, well, I don't know, you never know. You know, could come another chance where I put my thing, hand up. He's not an inexperienced politician, right? He's been around 25 years. No, but years. it could have been tongue-in-cheek. You yeah. could see that happening. But even his comment this afternoon to clean it up, uh, you know, where, where he's saying, um, at the present time, Malcolm Turnbull is the leader. I mean, he knows what how that's interpreted. Oh, look, look, we all know it's not going to happen. And it's time, look, some of these people moved on. You know, the idea that... You, Kevin's still grumpy because he, cause he, he lost his job, but... You know, there is change. If there wasn't change, we'd still be carrying bloody Menzies into meetings of the urn. You know, things change, <laughs> things move on. And some people, their careers end. Yeah, I mean, Bruce, you know, Labor's obviously having a lot of fun with this today, but Graham's right, isn't it? No-one seriously thinks it's going to happen, or even that Kevin Andrews is, <laughs> is seriously <laughs> contemplating a leadership tilt. No, but I think it just underpins that ongoing tension inside the Liberal Party. I mean, he was yeah. one of the key figures... Uh, who was deposed or demoted as a result of uh, Turnbull taking over the leadership. He obviously still feels bitter about that. Um, it, it just goes to demonstrate yet again that there is a lot of unhappiness in the house of Turnbull. And it's going to continue like that for some time. It's probably a reason, by the way, that they should uh, call a f an election and formally sooner rather than later so that they create a bit more discipline amongst these characters because right now that's not helping anybody on the Liberal side and, uh, and more power to Kevin Andrews' mouth. Uh, what about Dennis Jensen, Graham? just quickly on uh, the... Soon to be former member for Tangney, uh, he lost the pre-selection vote. He's obviously very unhappy. Feels he was stitched up. Um, is uh, trying to um, amount a defamation case against the Australian newspaper as well. But he, he, he's accepting the verdict, and he won't stand as an independent. Um, he got done by 50 votes. That's not a stitch up. That's a hiding. Mm -hmm. Um, the fact is, he got beaten by a man Ben McMorton, whom I know quite well, former state director and West, very good one, and he will make a fantastic politician. Look. Uh, Mr Jensen has been saved twice before, so he's sort of been lucky his career has extended this far and he just got beaten by a better person on the day, in fact got thrashed. Let's talk about the, um, uh, well, the, the bigger issue that we've seen over the last week and, and no doubt will dominate now the election campaign as well. It goes to whether the federal government can afford to spend more on schools and hospitals. Labor obviously thinks it can and has policies it says can pay for all of that. Malcolm Turnbull says, no, we have to live within our means. Now, Bruce Hawker, if this election becomes a question between... Uh, do you believe the priority should be fixing the budget, not spending any more, or do you actually think we need to spend more on health and education? Who wins? Yeah, that's a very good question. I, I think uh, health and education does tend to trump uh, a lot of the other issues out there, although economic management you know, does tend to work very well for the, uh, for the Conservatives. I mean, it, it's a tough call to make, but it, 
you know, it, it really is grist for the mill for Labor now to campaign on what sort of an Australia uh, Abbott, uh, sorry, Turnbull would be giving us because it's certainly not what was promised by the Conservatives in the last election. They were going to match everything that we did on health and education and, uh, and, and now they're not. So, and, and I think it's a pretty weak excuse to say, oh, well, just because they, you know, the Premier's wisely knocked back mm. the idea of, of uh, state-based income taxes, that, that they can't do anything. Well, that's the role what, of government Bruce, to start... what did you think of the idea of state-based income taxes? You've, you've of course, uh, worked in state government in years gone by. Nonsense. Absolute nonsense. And uh, it, it should yeah. have been dismissed by them. I mean, why do you create an, another layer of bureaucracy and accountability that pr the, the states aren't going to want it? I mean, it's a poison chalice as far as they're concerned. And you're going to get all this differential tax rates between the states. I don't think it's a good look at all. Uh, but again, Graham, it was him just floating an idea, let it go for a couple of days and it left, you know, flew away into the into the distance. It's it's bad politics. Bad politics. Graeme, how, how, Graeme, how would you characterise the last week on this issue? Oh, I thought at one stage there the PM was going to rewrite the first chapter in political miscalculation book. Um, I, mm. I, uh, look, I... Dropping the tax thing in 24 hours, which is really a nine-month debate, was very difficult. But the one that really, really worried me, and, and you know, I, I didn't mind him doing that, but the one that really worried me was an ABC radio interview where he left open this idea on school funding. And only three, you know, journalists and politicians listened to that ABC radio program, but by lunchtime, everyone in Australia had a view, and all they heard was that the PM was happy to fund private schools and wasn't going to give any money at all to government mm. schools. Mm. And mm. wouldn't you reckon when he went back to the office, the senior staff, the, the, the press office, the toilet cleaner would have had a press and, well, release and, ready yeah. to go and just say, look, um, boss, you left this open. Um, that isn't really And is what it still left mean. open? I mean, those comments on Fran Kelly uh, are still there uh, for Labor to maximise in the election campaign, aren't they? Well, uh, well, I think once the Premier's said we're not doing that, I think it was, it was all over. And, and you know, thank goodness, because it was, you know, there are, Malcolm is very good at a lot of things, but every now and again there's an interview where he leaves a few things open, and that one was almost rewrite, or writing the mm. Labor Party's first commercial, and I think, I think everyone's just got to say that discussion on Friday is dead. Mm. Um, Bruce, I read your very interesting comparison between Malcolm Turnbull and Kevin Rudd, who, of course, you know very well, mm. uh, in, in Peter Hutch's uh, column on the weekend. Uh, and we now see Kevin Rudd, of course, um, possibly vying for the job of UN Secretary General as surprise, well. Surprise, surprise. Um, what do you see as the, the, yeah, as the main um, similarities between the two? Be careful, this might be libelous. <laughs> <laughs> but who's going to sue? I might cop it from both of them, of course. Look, uh, I, I think it's in their personality more than anything else. You know, they're both very big personalities with big ideas, uh, but uh, also prone to just drop something on the table and expect everyone to understand implicitly how brilliant that idea is, just like that silly idea about state taxes and then the problems that were uh, arose, as Graham alluded to, with state versus uh, private school funding. That's exactly the sort of thing that those two guys, you know, struggled with. You know, they'd worked it all out in their own heads, but they didn't realise that most of the Australian public is still, you know, thinking about what they're going to have for lunch, not worrying about the detail of all those policies. Very similar personalities. I'm not saying that their policy prescriptions are, are similar, mm. but, uh, you know, don't suffer fools gladly, find it difficult really to hide their contempt, although I think Turnbull does a better job than Rudd on that uh, for, for lesser mortals. And, uh, you know, all those things really start to create problems for them. And most uh, importantly, I think, not really creatures of their own parties and therefore don't understand, uh, you know, some of the some of the pushback that's going to happen when they start directing mm. their party to the centre in the way both of them have tried to do. Yeah, well, we'll see. Uh, Bruce, Hawker, Graham Morris, we do have to leave it there. Thank you both very much. We'll catch up again next